For my whole life, I've heard the saying, when the dogwoods are blooming, the fish are biting. We're going to test that theory because driving in this morning, the dogwoods were blooming on both sides of the road here in the southeastern United States. We're going crappie fishing on this week's episode. One of my favorite things to do at a location I've never caught them before. Come on along. Let's Fish TV is on the air right now. That is a fish. Oh man, look at this. <laughs> It's time for the only program that brings you real-time fishing reports from the Southeast region every week. Oh my gosh. Oh, look at that. Woo! This is Let's Fish. Hi everybody and welcome to spring. I am so happy you're along with us today because spring is my favorite time of the year to go fishing. Why? Because all of the fish species are staging up, getting ready to spawn, they're actively feeding and you can catch a bunch of them very readily. We're going crappie fishing on today's show. Those fish are getting ready to spawn as well. We're going to be doing it on a lake I've never seen before. I'm standing in North Carolina. I'd like to welcome you in to beautiful Lake Wild situated on the North and South Carolina border. It's a long, narrow lake on the Catawba River. It's got several species of fish in it, a lot of bass in it here, but we're going crappie fishing. It's got an excellent population of crappie. We're going to be long lining on this week's show, and I'll show you some about that technique and how you can find and catch more crappie long lining. And I'd like to welcome to the Let's Fish family for the very first time the Camus Boat Company. And in particular, this is my Camus CX-21. It's a 21-foot, fully loaded boat, top of the line, with all the top-end components. The attention to detail, the structural components of this boat are the Lexus of all bass fishing boats, and fishing boats in particular. And I am so much looking forward to getting the CX-21 out on the water. This is its maiden voyage. First time I've launched this boat. We're gonna be spending this season showing you some of the features, some of the components, some of the way they build these Camus boats to last a lifetime. I'm really looking forward to that. While we're out doing that, we're taking you around your local region for this week's fishing reports from our expert team of insider reporters from lakes, rivers, and bays right where you live, both saltwater and freshwater. They'll show you where to go catch some this coming weekend. Right now, the Camus CX-21 goes down the boat ramp and into Lake Wiley, North and South Carolina. Next time you see me, I'll be out there hopefully reeling in a crappie. Let's get things started back at the studio and your weekend planner. Hi everyone, we hope you guys are staying safe out there. The good news is the fish don't know about any of this and they're still biting. Meanwhile, the lunar tables are predicting fair game fish activity throughout both days this weekend. Peak game fish activity begins before the sunrise at 2.43 on Saturday and 3.20 Sunday morning. Best daytime action will begin at 2.55 on Saturday and 3.37 Sunday afternoon. The sun will rise at 7.21 and set at 7.47. Evenings will feature a moon that is 15% visible. Stay with us, we've got fishing reports from across the area on the way. Plus, Bassmaster Elite Angler Brian Snowden stops by to answer your Ask the Pro question. We're back in a bit. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Mercury. Go boldly. Lawrence, America's number one fish finder. Lose, feel the difference. And by Gulf Shores and Orange Beach, Alabama. Get our free fishing guide at orangebeach.com. Come in this boat. Come in this boat, you South Carolina crappie. All right, there you go. There's a Lake Wiley crappie. a bite and a bite fish all right hey welcome back everybody we've made it out on Lake Wiley here on the North Carolina South Carolina border let's come let's come this way with this fish and we've gotten ourselves a bite here from hopefully a crappie got set up out here long lining today I've got all my big rods out there he is up on top not a big one but it's a keeper come up here oh, yeah that's a halfway decent fish I'll slip the net under him 
There we go. Come in this boat. Come in this boat, you South Carolina crappie. Well, I've got the hook in, in the net. There. There we go. All right. There you go. There's a Lake Wiley crappie. Well, let's get you set up here. As I mentioned, I'm out here doing some long lining, and there's another bite. I got another one right there. Let's put that one in the net. This is going to be a little bitty one, I think. He's hardly even fighting at all. So I'm just going to winch him in real quick. This is what can happen if you get on a school of them out here. Little bitty one, little bitty one. Is that uh, you can pull across the top of them with a long line, these long poles. Come right across the top of them and catch you a couple of crappie. There you go, those would both be a couple of keepers, but this is their day today with me because they're not gonna get kept. Any of these other boats you see around here, they would go in the live well. Not today, we don't have a way to take them back, so. All right, well, Lake Wiley is uh, situated dead on the North Carolina, South Carolina border. It's about a 13,000 surface acre lake, but that's, that'll fool you because it's a long, narrow lake with a lot of arms and creeks coming off of it. It's 325 miles of shoreline. What's happening right now at Lake Wiley is uh, we're in springtime and the fish are moving towards the spawn. They haven't spawned yet here. And so they're at the mouths and inside the mouths of creeks. So you can see in front of us here, maybe you can see, we're in about halfway back in a major creek coming off the river channel. So as I said, we're set up with long lines and I'll explain more about that later, but we're just covering a lot of water, trying to see if we can kind of pinpoint where some of these schools are and I'll be able to show you some on my electronics later, but we're off to a good start. Lake Wiley. Hey guys, welcome to this week's Tennessee, Mississippi and Alabama fishing report. This week's report is brought to you by TH Marine. Uh, Every time I'm in the boat, I'm within arm's reach of a TH Marine product, and that's for one reason. It makes my life easier, it makes my life more efficient. I'm talking about the, the fishing boat, fishing tournaments, pleasure boating, pontoon, whatever you do, go to thmarine.com today. Welcome to the Southeast, where today it's hot, tomorrow it's cold, it always rains. That's the only constant we've got so far. Mississippi, it's Ross Barnett time. Them bass are eating. I talked to a buddy the other day that caught them really good on a double Colorado spinnerbait. Uh, in Tennessee, I'm gonna go with Old Faithful. I'm going to Chickamauga right now. Those big fish are starting to eat. Catch them right now swimming a swim bait. A really good catch them on a red eye shad right now. Uh, in Alabama, pretty hard to beat Gunnersville, And it's gonna fish a whole lot like Chickamauga. It's also on the Tennessee River, um, and they're doing a lot of the same things. That red-eye shad bite, the swim bait bite, you can still catch them on an A-rig. Really fun time to fish. Catch a break in the weather where it's not raining, come out here and get you some. We'd love to see you here. God bless. Four rods out combing this water, and I'm coming across these little pods of bait fish and a few scattered crappie around. There's a bite. Yep, that's a fish. You can actually see the fish before your bait comes across them, which is a cool thing because you kind of know when the chance is you're gonna get a bite. Not a big one, he would be a keeper. Be about a 10 inch crappie, something like that. That's not what we're after, but it's a crappie anyway. Let me explain my long lining technique to you if I can get this loose right here. I'm, uh, I've got four rods out and I've got two 14 foot Lou's Wally Marshall Signature Series rods on the outside. So I put my 14 footer out here. And then I've got a 12 footer that I put inside it. That way it spaces them out. So I've got them about six feet apart so I've got a 14 and a 12 and then a 12 and a 14, which puts four baits six feet apart. And I can comb the water that way. And as I come across these pods of bait fish and, and some scattered crappie, I've got a better chance of dragging through them and getting a bait in front of a fish. I'm using a little bait I'll show you at the end. It's a Bobby Garland bait that's got a little scissor and tail action. It's called a slab huntar. 
and it's a great bait for trolling like we're doing. The reason that we're doing this long lining technique today is because I just want to cover a lot of water. The fish aren't really grouped up in, in places that I can sit right on top of them and fish vertically. So I'm just having to go up and down these coves, up and down these creeks and try to cover a lot of water and just get it in front of as many fish as I possibly can. Look at that, it was hanging over the side of the boat and I caught one. What is going on here? I just dropped it back in. Here's one. Got him. See what we got. Long line crappie. Yeah, that's a good crappie. I'm gonna get my net. And then do that. That's a little bit darker colored one than most of the ones we've been catching. Not big. Let me talk to you just a second about the progression of where these crappie are going. We talked about springtime crappie fishing. These fish are staging for the spawn where, we're, where we are here at Lake Wiley in North Carolina. They're going to start off at the mouths of the creeks and coves, sitting out in deep water. The females have egg sacs that are full of eggs and they're just ripening. As the water temperature warms, as we get sun on the water, eggs are ripening. Then as instinct starts to kick in. These fish will migrate down the creeks toward the back of the creeks. They're going to be going shallower. And ultimately, when the water temperature hits in the mid 60s or so, sometimes upper 60s, they're going to move right up against the banks, right in the backs of the creeks and coves, and they're going to make nests or beds. Females lay those eggs, males fertilize them, they stay around while they hatch. It looks kind of like a bass nest. Then once they hatch, those fry will disperse and the crappie will transition, migrate right back down Look at that. It was hanging over the side of the boat and I caught one. What is going on here? I just dropped it back in and I wasn't even trolling it back there. I just had it dropped over the side of the boat and another one hit it. Anyway, um, they're going to migrate right back down these creeks, right back out the mouth, and they'll set up in deeper water for the summer on brush piles, docks, bridges, any kind of deep water structure, those fish can move up and down vertically. That's where they're going to set up and they'll stay during the summer. So that's kind of your progression of starting in the pre-spawn to the spawn, the transition, and then the summertime pattern. That's what the crappie are doing and they're doing it where you live. And if you can stay on them, if you can keep following them on that transition, that tells you where to look and you can catch a bunch of them yourself. Cool mornings and warming sun and water is making the fish starting to turn on throughout the coastal south. I'll have all the details in a minute, but first this from our good friends at Miralure. Miralure, building quality saltwater lures since 1937, including the new line of Miradine plugs. Turn on the bite anytime, tie on a Miralure. Captain Patrick Garmerson in Alabama says the sheep's head fishing is wide open for fish in the 3 to 8 pound range. Uh, he's catching those fish on shrimp, crab knuckles, and fiddler crabs. He's catching most of these fish just off Mobile Bay, and uh, if he bumps offshore a little bit, he's also catching some red snapper, mangrove snapper, pompano, and white trout. Uh, he says those near shore reefs have got trigger fish, which he's catching on uh, cut bait and squid. Uh, be sure that uh, you keep the, the trigger fish limit to one. Captain Robert Brody in Biloxi, Mississippi uh, says the uh, warming water and, and bait activity has been excellent. Uh, the shrimp, uh, shrimp baits are starting to produce fish really well, catching plenty of redfish in shallow, murky water. In Georgia, whiting fishing has been good uh, around the beaches and the sounds, and the sheep's head fishing are, near, are around the near shore reefs offshore. Well, that's it for the coastal south. Get out on the water and take a youngster with you when you go. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Motor Guides Tour Pro, Cable Steer Motor with GPS Anchor, Waypoint Marine, the Gulf Coast's leading saltwater boating specialist, Strike King, Taiwan On, and by Low Boat. Welcome to Low Country. And here they go. They're going to ski right by me and wave at me on the way by. That's just horrible. That is ridiculous. Here's a bite, look here. 
Boy, they're hitting it light. He's got it. There we go. That's a decent pull there. Here he comes. Not a monster, but just another keeper fish if we were keeping them. Well, let's talk a little bit about long lining. You know, a lot of folks would look at what we're doing today and just think, oh, they're just out there just trolling around. You just put your trolling motor down, turn it on, and just throw a couple of rods out and troll. You know, it's a lot more technical than that if you're really trying to figure out what the fish are doing and you want to keep your bait right in the spot where the fish are. So it's three factors. First factor is the weight of the jig heads. I've got two 1 16th ounce Bobby Garland Moglo jig heads on here. So that's 1 8 ounce total weight. Second factor is the speed you go. The uh, faster you troll, the shallower the baits will ride up. The slower you troll, the further they'll sink down. And then the third factor is how much line you have out. The shorter your line, the shallower they ride up, the more line you have out, the deeper they'll fall. So you take those three factors, combine them all together, and you try to just experiment and figure out where the fish are on any given day. Now I'm throwing out about 50 feet behind the boat, which is a long cast and a few pulls. And I'm trolling about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 miles an hour, something like that. And I've got two 1 16th ounce jig heads. So I think that gets me down about 15 feet, something like that. And that's about where I'm seeing the majority of the fish on the graph that I'm coming across. And uh, that's the technical part of trying to catch as many of these as you can by keeping your bait in the strike zone as long as possible. Hey folks, it's time for your Carolinas Report. This week brought to you by Crazy Sister Marina. And I'll tell you what, you want to live like a local when you're in the Grand Strand area, we can take care of all your needs on the water. Come by and rent a boat and go out. We've got everything for you to go crabbing and get you set up to enjoy what we get to enjoy every day of our lives down here while you're in town visiting. Visit CrazySisterMarina.com for more information and to book your trip today. We're going to talk salt water, and I'll tell you what, the word's released on the short season of flounder that North Carolina is going to get. My good buddy, Captain John Owens, tells me that he expects a ton of big flounder to be caught in that short season this year. And you need to book a trip. Captain Jot of Jot It Down Charters can take care of your needs up there in North Carolina and get you on some big flatfish during that short season we've got this year. And we're going to talk about offshore as we're seeing, you know, coming out of that full moon a week or so ago, we're starting to see the Wahoo pack up again on top of the ledges. It's been a slow winter for us, honestly. That bait is starting to pile up. The water's warming up. We're getting some good eddies rolling in, and it's time to head out to that break to get your big wahoo. This is your Carolina's Report, brought to you by Crazy Sister Marina. Remember, fish smarter, not harder, and keep your chaos organized. There's been a couple of times today I've had two fish on and one time three. There's another bite right there. I just had a bite on the other side. Hey everybody, we are wearing them out today at beautiful Lake Wiley here in North and South Carolina. Ooh, that's a decent one. We've got a big ski boat coming in right behind me. You better get used to that if you're gonna fish on this lake because this place is heavily populated, got lots of boat traffic and lots of development, lots of homes around it. And here they go, they're going to ski right by me and wave at me on the way by. That's just horrible. That is ridiculous. A little common courtesy while I'm catching a big old crappie like that and then hang on because here we go, rocking back and forth. That is just so bad. Welcome to South Carolina, I guess. I hope they're, I don't think they're all like that. That's just a... That's just what happens. I will say this, this place is heavily developed, lots of lake homes, lots of retail around it. And uh, I'm gonna put that fish back. Um, I, I have caught a ton of fish today. I could have easily kept my limit of 20 crappie over eight inches long today, no problem. I've caught several in the 13 inch range, maybe 114. No way to get them all in a 30 minute show like this, but uh, even with all the boat traffic, pleasure boaters, 
chainsaws, lawn mowers. These fish are just biting anyway. You saw them just catching that fish right around that skier. Watch our latest episode or catch up on past episodes on our website at letsfishtv.com. Be sure to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter for new fishing videos every day. And download the free Waypoint TV app to get all the latest episodes every week on your phone, tablet, computer, or smart TV. Let's Fish TV is proudly backed by Bobby Garland Crappie Baits and the original Baby Shad and new slab Huntar Minnow. Glacier Glove. Stay outdoors longer with our gloves, hats, and shades. Balls Out. Made in the USA. Heavy duty mounts for your fish finders. And by Camus Boats. Tomorrow's tournament boat today. Welcome back, everyone. Let's get right to your Ask the Pro question for this week. Creighton wants to know, when you are having a bad day on the water, how do you keep a positive attitude? For an answer, we asked Bass Master Elite Angler Brian Snowden. You know, if you're having a rough day out there, just always stay, stay positive because it seems like the more you try and rush, the more you try and hurry, and the more you push things. And so it's always just kind of step back, take a deep breath, remember what you know, what got you where you were, and just remember to be calm and patient and take the time and it'll come back, even if you're having a bad day. Thank you, Brian. If you want some help from one of the pros, simply go to letsfishtv.com and follow the Ask the Pro link to submit a question. Now it's time to find out who wins this week's Big Catch of the Week. We are back at the boat ramp at Lake Wiley, and it's time right now for somebody to get their big fish photo shown on television in the Big Catch of the Week contest. This week's winner is Blake Smelser of Sharpsburg, Georgia, showing a 10 pound, seven ounce largemouth bass he caught at Lake Oconee in Georgia. If you'd like to have a chance to have you and your big fish shown on television, just go to our website at letsfishtv.com. Down toward the bottom of the home page is the Big Catch of the Week area. Click there to follow the instructions to enter and send us your information. You do need specialized gear to long line for these crappie. You need good rod holders. You also need good long rods. These are the Lou's Wally Marshall Signature Series trolling rods. I like the 12 and the 14 footers. You can identify them by the orange here toward the butt of the rod. And I had those rigged out with Lou's Mr. Crappie Slab Daddy casting reels. The baits we used were the Bobby Garland Slab Huntar Minnows. They're the perfect long lining trolling bait because of the unique scissoring action that those tails have when they swim along. We used 16th ounce heads, but you've got to experiment for the depth you want to go. Likely none of us would say that we want to be selfish. We would all aspire to be unselfish. However, selfishness comes by default. It comes naturally in our American culture. We all want our way all of the time. So if we want to choose unselfishness, that comes by choice and we have to practice it every day. Otherwise, we fall into old patterns. Why is unselfishness such a good thing to learn? Well, the simple fact is the world just doesn't revolve around me or you. We need each other, and we need to practice watching out for each other. Thanks for joining us today from Lake Wiley, North and South Carolina, catching some good crappie. We had a great time on our first visit here and a great time fishing out of the Camus CX-21 fully rigged bass boat. We're gonna have a blast out of this boat this season. We'll see you next week. Until then, let's fish, everybody. I'm Barry Stokes. Be safe, have fun. Bye-bye, y'all. Hey, guys, thanks for watching. If you want to see more fishing tips, how-to videos, big fish catches, and full episodes of our Let's Fish TV show, be sure to subscribe right here to our YouTube channel. You can also like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter. Good fishing out there.